Let's talk about the Surface Laptop Studio. This £1,500 laptop launched this month here in the UK, so I grabbed one as quickly as I could to see if it lives up to the hype. Now, I've been playing with it for a few weeks, and, well, let's have a look. Let's smash the tech specs first, and then we can talk about it in real terms. This is the entry-level model with a quad-core 11th gen i5, 16 gig of DDR4 RAM, a 256 gig SSD, and Intel's Iris Xe graphics. Now, it costs around £450 retail, that's about US dollars and it ships with Windows 11. It's got a 14.4-inch screen, which is bigger than any other Microsoft Surface or laptop that they do. Now, that is 2400 by 1600 120 hertz. Uh, refresh and a 10 point multi touch screen. Now you can go all the way up to a 32 gig of RAM model, which does include an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. That comes in at £2,879 or about US dollars. In the box, you get a 65 watt surface charger, but you can also charge it through USB C. Now, the Surface Laptop Studio is special, at least in the Microsoft range, because you've got these three different form factors. The screen doesn't detach like we've seen with things like the Surface Book, but instead you can use it as a traditional laptop with a complete touchscreen. You can move it to stage mode, which is where you can be consuming content. Or finally, you've got studio mode, where you can pretty much use this as a tablet. In all these modes, you can also use the Surface Pen 2 for drawing and annotating documents. But of course, it makes the most sense if you're going to do that in studio mode. The pen is sold separately and retails for around £129, that's about US$170. Dollars. Now that's slightly more expensive maybe than a second gen Apple Pencil, but it is in about the right kind of price point. This screen is absolutely gorgeous and the viewing angle on this panel is incredible. The colours are vibrant and I genuinely found the experience to be a little bit jaw dropping at first. The multi-touch works really well. And do you know what? The screen rotation is definitely a lot faster than we've seen on previous generations of Microsoft devices. Let's have a quick chat about the build quality of this thing because this chassis is predominantly aluminium, which I'm thankful for because it's already heavy, but also it's absolutely solid. It doesn't feel flimsy like those Surface Pro keyboards. You don't feel like you're gonna break anything, which is really good because the first couple of times you flip this screen, you're a little bit nervous about how thin this all is. <laughs> The Surface Laptop Studio has got a single front-facing camera. It's this 1080p built-in camera here that also supports Windows Hello. And as you can see, in pretty challenging light conditions here, it works really well. The sun is streaming right in through that window there. But it works brilliantly. Look at this. Even as I've got the sun right behind me, it copes really well in different lighting environments. So this is fantastic. It's also got the built-in front-facing microphones here. So there's two microphones in the array and that makes it perfect for whenever we're doing Teams calls. Underneath, there are four Omnisonic speakers, which I've got to be honest, sound awesome. I'm no audiophile, but the sound is really loud. It's got good range and it, all right, it might be a little bit muddy in places, but you can easily spend a fair bit of time watching content on here and having a great experience. For meetings, the audio is nice and clear, which is exactly what you want. All right, here's where things get a little bit sticky. There are two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 type connectors on the left-hand side, and on the right, there's a three and a half millimeter audio combo port and Microsoft's proprietary Surface connector. The Thunderbolt 4 ports will run up to 40 gig a second, so you can easily connect two 4K external displays or a hub for connecting to multiple devices. Now, whilst it's great that we even get Thunderbolt and Microsoft are being forward thinking with those USB-C ports, this does leave me with a problem. Here are my 200 pound Surface Headphones 2 and my YubiKey that I use every day, and I can't plug them in. So either I'm off to buy some USB-A to USB-C adapters, or I can buy a dock. Now, one good thing at least that the USB-C gives us is the option to reuse a third-party dock. So for example, I've got a Lenovo USB dock Gen 2, and it was great. I connected multiple monitors, Ethernet, and USB-A type devices immediately to the Surface Laptop Studio. And also, the laptop was able to charge quite happily over USB-C. Otherwise, Microsoft do offer their own Surface dock for around £259, that's 340 US dollars, if you can get hold of one, because like you can see right here, they're not in stock. 
But look at the size of this thing. Are you honestly telling me we couldn't have got just one USB-A port on here? I know, I know, it's old technology. But look, there's a three and a half millimeter audio combo jack on there and that's included. For connectivity as well, we've also got Wi-Fi 6 AX wireless, which gives us speeds up to two gigabits a second and Bluetooth 5.2, so you can connect to any of your other devices. When it comes to the keyboard, I've got to say this keyboard is lovely. The key travel is perfect. It's not too noisy and the keycaps are easily readable in the daylight. And we've also got some nice backlighting as well. Everything is well spaced out and there just don't seem to be any compromises that I can see. I have fallen in love with this trackpad though. It is so silky smooth. It just feels much better than any other trackpad I've seen before. It supports multi-touch and the button press is, well, reassuring. It's not too hard, not too soft, just, ooh, just perfect. Let's talk about weight. It's a beast. This thing weighs four pounds. That's just around two kilos. Now that makes it twice as heavy as the Surface Pro 8 and 25% heavier than the latest Surface laptop. And do you know what? It's not something that you don't notice. This will definitely be uncomfortably heavy for some people. Now, Microsoft claimed that the Surface Laptop Studio will run up to 19 hours of battery life on an i5 model and 18 hours on the i7. Now, I've got to be honest, we didn't get that in our testing, but we still did get over 10 hours on a single charge doing work-based activities like browsing, Word documents, and a few Teams calls, and even a bit of YouTube watching in there. Now, I can't say that battery life was ever even slightly an issue during our tests. To sum it up, the Surface Laptop Studio is a gorgeous device. It's well-specced for the more executive users, which makes sense because the price point is right up there with the M1 MacBook Pro and the kind of Dell XPS 15 territory. These three form factors are great. You know, they let users decide how they want to use the laptop. And that screen is just beautiful. And those speakers, they're pretty awesome too but it does have its downsides. First off, it's heavy. It's really heavy. It has limited connectivity options unless you buy a dock, and it's a funny shape. Now, that might seem like a funny thing to pick at, but when I think of premium price point laptops, I personally feel that there's something premium about those thinner laptops, like Microsoft's own Surface Laptop 4, for example. An annoyance for me is that there's no physical buttons when you're in studio mode. Now, again, I know it's a little thing, but whenever I use tablets, I'm just so used to quickly adjusting the volume or maybe a quick tap to power off. And there's tons of space on this chassis. So it would have been nice to have that. I mean, maybe on the next one, Microsoft. You can't upgrade or repair anything in here, which is a bit annoying giving Microsoft's new statements around right to repair. So that's it. That's our look at the Surface Studio laptop. If you think it's the device for you, go out and get one.